Still, there's one remaining case of an improper integral over infinite intervals. So we discussed in, in case A and B, we discussed one-sided infinite intervals, but of course we also have a two-sided infinite interval, which is just R, you know, the interval minus infinity, infinity. Well, suppose that for some A, some constant in, in R, A in R, we have that the integral from minus infinity to A of x dx and the other one, the case A, integral uh, from a to infinity fx dx exists, then we will define the integral from minus infinity to infinity fx dx. Uh, what do we mean by this integral? Well, we just sum up over those two parts, from minus infinity to a fx dx and the integral from a to infinity fx dx. Well, just to illustrate what's, uh, what's happening here, consider the example of the function fx equals x times e to the power minus x squared. We studied for this function and uh, the typical integral. We just calculated the integral from minus infinity to zero of this interval of this function. And uh, moreover, this is a special function since it's an odd function, so fx equals minus f minus x. So this indicate uh, we, we can use this to find an integral. So in the former example, we've seen that the integral from minus infinity to zero fx dx e equals minus a half. But since the symmetry due to the oddness of the function we get, of course, that the integral from 0 to infinity of fx dx equals a half. So we can give the integral minus infinity infinity fx dx a meaning, since both parts exist for 0, so we can just add these two numbers, minus a half and a half, which equals 0. Uh, 